In our previous videos, we've talked about the meaning of natural growth. For one unit growth rate, we consider n steps of growth. Each increases by one over n until the final term. We've shown that when the growth is happening continuously, so that when n approaches infinity, the outcome reaches a limit called e. We've shown that e can be calculated as an infinite series. It's approximately 2.71828. In this video, we will see the general case when the growth rate can be positive or negative, integers or fractions. Going through n steps, the outcome is in the form of nth power. We're going to see that this result can be represented in a very convenient form, as e to the power of r. So basically, e becomes the language to express natural change. Now, let's start with a case where the growth rate is two units per unit time. What would it become one unit time later? If we follow the definition of natural growth, then we should divide the growth over n intervals. Each interval grows by one plus two over n, another one plus two over n, so on, until n times. So now the question is, what happens when n goes to infinity? There is a mathematical way of doing this through derivation. I will show that in the future, but right now I will use an intuitive approach. It's not mathematically rigorous, but it's easy to follow. If we choose to observe at half the time, then the mother cell would have produced one unit. Why? Remember, the mother cell's production is proportional to the time elapsed. That's why we are able to divide it over n intervals in the first place. Then we can think of dividing that half unit time into n intervals. At each step, it grows by one plus one over n. So we would again end up with this term. But at half unit time, then as n goes to infinity, we are again left with the limit of this term, which is e. So that means when we double the rate of growth, we only need half the time to reach e unit from one unit. Hence, given another half the unit time, it will multiply by another e units. So by one unit time, we should have e to the power of two units. Similarly, when we triple the growth rate, now it takes a third unit time to reach e, another third to reach e to the power of two, so at one unit time it reaches e to the power of three. So for a general growth rate r, when it's a positive integer, one unit becomes e to the power of r units. Now, what if this rate is not integer? Say it's one half. What would it become one unit time later? The growth rate is only one half, so if we extend it by another unit time, the mother cell would have grown one unit, right? Then we know two units time later, it should become e. Hence, at half of that time, it should become square root of e, because it means per unit time it multiplies by square root e times, so that two units time later it becomes e. It can be represented as e to the power of one half. Similarly, if the rate is a third, then if we extend it to the third unit times, it will become e. So one unit time later, it becomes third root of e. The third root means if you multiply it three times, you will get e. It can be represented by e to the power of a third. Generally, for a growth rate of one over n, we can extend it to n units of time. So that means one unit time later, it becomes the nth root of e, which can be represented by e to the power of one nth. Now, what if the rate is m times of that? Whenever you speed up the rate, it will show up on top of e. So one unit time, it becomes e to the power of m over n. Now this rate can be any rational numbers. So now we have a more general expression for any growth rate, positive rational numbers. Hence, we see that e gives us a convenient way to express the outcome for any growth rate. 
Now, can we also use e to express decay? In the case of growth, each step grows by r over n over n steps. It takes on the form of the nth power. We've shown that when n goes to infinity, it can be written in a convenient format as e to the power of r. Now, in terms of decay, each step shrinks by r over n over n steps. It becomes one minus r over n to the power of n. So the question is, what is the limit of this guy? Again, I'm using an intuitive way to deal with this. Let's think of the growth problem in a reverse direction, starting from e to the power of r, so that each tiny interval it shrinks by r over n, going all the way to the beginning. It becomes e to the power of r times this term. It should equals to one, right? So that means the limit of this guy would be one over e to the power of r. It can be represented as e to the power of minus r. So the conclusion is, whatever the rate of change is, positive or negative, integers or not, the continuous compounding of the infinitesimal changes will result into a convenient math expression in terms of e. Hence, e becomes the language to express change. In the future. I will explore how e can take on imaginary numbers. <laughs>